Hey guys, DM Cubing, and today I present a new series called Mag Cube School. Today's episode explores the differences that we find between black plastic cubes, primary plastic cubes, and colored stickerless cubes. A while back when I started doing Mag Cubes, I discovered one day after doing a uh, stickerless Valk 3 magnetic that all of a sudden my magnets felt much stronger than I had been experiencing, like within a uh, black Valk 3. Uh, same position, same magnets, same gluing technique, basically. But I noticed immediately that the magnets felt stronger. This kind of puzzled me. We're dealing with the plastic thickness that's the same between, you know, either a black cube or the stickerless cube. I knew something was going on there, and I shared my uh, my feelings with others, and some kind of debated whether what I was feeling was correct or not. But I think I've done enough of cubes now. I think I'm up to about 30 uh, magnetic conversions on cubes. It's over 20. Anyway, that I kind of felt like, no, I, I'm experiencing this. The same way that I can go to a, a primary plastic Waylong GTS and the cube feels better than it does using uh, a black plastic Waylong. Uh, you know, now there's a difference there in the plastic. I think that the, the, the plastic on the, the primary seems a little more porous, but... Um, but something was going on with the magnetic pull force, and I wanted to figure that out. So initially, I built a tabletop little device that consisted of a plastic ruler and a compass on the other end. And this ruler was on my desk here, and I had it kind of at about a 30-degree angle, and a compass was on the top above that. And then below it, what I would do was I would move a cubie piece edge removed from the cube just along the edge of the uh, plastic ruler to see how much needle mo motion I'd get out of the compass, how much I could impact that needle to move. So having used the same magnets, the same cube, I, I used a black cubie piece out of it, moved it along the ruler to see how much it would make the needle move. Then I used one that was uh, colored. It was actually white. And I noticed that the white cubie piece caused more of a motion from the magnet, um, from the compass needle. So that made me think, okay, there is something here between the black plastic and the primary or white or colored plastics. There's a difference here in the kind of magnetic field, the magnetic pull force that they're allowing. So recently, I asked my friend who's a professor at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. He's a doctorate, uh, a doctor. He got his doctorate from uh, Princeton University and he's a, prof a professor of engineering. And I posed, I posed this question to him. I told him what my findings were. And uh, here's his answer. I'll read it to you. He says, Hi, David. I asked your question to some friends that know more about magnetic materials than myself. I'm just a theorist in these matters, and they agree with your findings. The black dye has a pigment based in some iron oxide, ferrite, magnetite. And this leads the dyed medium to become more capable of conducting the magnetic field. Notice, however, that the magnetic field lines become trapped inside this more conductive medium. And so the field becomes stuck inside the material and doesn't go onto the outside, turning the black plastic into a shield that restrains the magnetic field only at the side of the source and nothing at the other side, as shown in this picture. And he enclosed this picture. So I'm just kind of glad to know that what I felt kind of at a gut level and through experience has been proved. It's, it's the dyes that they use in the black pigmentation can turn a, contain a certain amount of iron. You know, these oxides and ferrites, they magnets and the, they're attracted, you know. So, of course, it's going to have some kind of uh, and we're talking at a very minuscule level. You know, a magnet doesn't stick to it. It doesn't have that much iron in it, but it's enough that is we're building a magnetic cube that, that I can feel the difference. You know, there's nothing wrong with using uh, magnets and black cubes, but it just kind of proves that what I was feeling all along that the magnets became more apparent in a stickerless or in a primary plastic cube. And my friend um, Joe here, he, he confirmed that. And I just wanted to share these findings with you. So I'll talk to you later. Happy cubing, everybody. Bye.